Today we're talking Mate 20 Pro. This is my comprehensive review. Let's go. So a couple months ago, I switched from an iPhone 6 to a Huawei Mate 20 Pro. I did a little unboxing video and a lot of people seemed to like that. Now in that video I said, I will use the phone for a bit, I'll get to know it, and I'll figure out what I like about it, what I don't like, and I'll do a full review after, you know, I've had a little bit of intimate time with the phone. Well, it's been a little while, and a few people have asked for it, so here we are. We are talking about the Mate 20 Pro. I'm going to go through everything that I think is important about this phone that you should know before you buy it, pretty much. First, let's talk about the design. It's got a bunch of unique colors that you can choose from, and by a bunch I mean like four, and one of them is black, but there are some good choices. The one I have is Twilight, and I was going to put a skin on this phone, but I just like that color too much to want to cover it up. In a world of black glass phones, this phone really stands out. Speaking of colors, the power button is this bright, vibrant red color, which I actually really like. I thought I wasn't going to like it that much, but after using it, it's really starting to grow on me, and it's kind of eye-catching actually. This phone is also IP68 resistant, which means it is water and dust resistant, so you can drop this in water for a short period of time, and it should be fine. I haven't tested it, I'm not going to, but that's the claim. Now moving to the bottom of the phone, we have a single port, a USB-C port thankfully. I'm really glad this phone is USB-C like pretty much every other phone in 2018 other than the iPhone. And also just like pretty much every phone in 2018, this phone doesn't have a headphone jack. So there is a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter jack connector in the box for you in case you want to use headphones. It also comes with USB-C headphones and of course you can always use Bluetooth headphones if you have them. The whole headphone jack thing doesn't really bother me anymore. Uh, I'm sort of fully moved over to Bluetooth so uh, if you have a Bluetooth pair of headphones and Bluetooth speakers, you know, you're probably fine. Now the one horrible horrible design flaw about this phone that I think Huawei thought they were being clever. But you'll notice there's no speaker grill on this phone, no matter where you look. There's one for the earpiece when you're talking on the phone, but other than that, there's there's no speaker grill like on a normal phone. And that is because the speaker is inside the USB-C port. I'm not sure who thought this was a good idea. I guess it was probably a space saving cost, but it just doesn't make sense. It's extremely easy to cover up the speaker with your finger or your hand when you're holding the phone, and when you plug it into charge, the audio quality becomes muffled. So that is a huge downside to this if you ever try to watch videos or listen to music with just the built-in speaker of the phone. It gets the job done, but it's just really not a great design. Another little flaw in the design I noticed is the volume buttons and the power button are all on one side of the phone, which is fine in theory, but the volume down button and the power button are really close to each other, and pressing those two buttons also happens to trigger the screenshot. Now let's just say I have a lot of screenshots on my camera roll that I didn't mean to take. Moving on to the screen, it's a good quality OLED screen, but I've, I have noticed some color shifting around the curved edges of the screen, where the colors shift a little bit. Now some people have reported some really bad color shifting issues with the screens. Um, I can't speak to that, I haven't had anything major, but I notice when I'm in the dark and I'm looking at the screen, there are some little color shifts on the edges. But otherwise, it's mostly unnoticed. Now this phone also has an in-screen fingerprint sensor, and a lot of people were saying it's not as good as a traditional fingerprint sensor because it's a different technology and it's under the screen, but it's actually pretty fast. It might not be as fast as the traditional ones, but trust me, it gets the job done, and it's actually really cool. And yes, this phone does have a notch, but it contains the sensors to have Face ID. The Face ID technology in this phone is extremely similar to what Apple's doing in their iPhones, which is a huge compliment to Huawei because Apple did it really well and Huawei basically copied them. But anyway, the Face ID technology is really good in this phone and I really like it. Now moving on to the internals of this phone, the Mate 20 Pro has a Kirin 980 processor, I believe, which has four faster cores and four slower, more efficient cores. Now that's good for battery management. So when the phone's not doing anything, it uses the more efficient cores. And when you're doing something that's more intensive, then it uses those faster cores. Now the base model of this phone comes with six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, which is great. And then you can upgrade to eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. The phone is also expandable up to 256 gigabytes of flash storage, but you have to use Huawei's proprietary nano SIM card thingy. You can only buy it from Huawei, which is a little bit annoying, but at least the option's there. 
Now, one of the best parts about this phone is the massive battery. This has a 4,200 milliamp hour battery in it, which lasts forever. It's probably my favorite thing about this phone is just how long the battery life lasts, which I can say I haven't timed it, but the charging is very fast. Now it has another feature, which a lot of people were saying is more of a gimmick and people are probably right. And that's reverse wireless charging. So you can actually press this phone up to another phone and the Huawei Mate 20 Pro will charge the other phone if you have the setting turned on. It's wireless charging, so it would take forever to charge your phone completely, but it's more like your friend's phone, it has 5% left and you're still at 60% and you're like, hey, I'll give you some of my battery. It's, I think that's what it's for. I think it's more of just a party trick, but it's, it's there nonetheless. You don't have to use it. Moving on to the camera, or should I say cameras? because there's three of them. There's the standard medium angle lens, which is a 40 megapixel sensor. And then there's also a three times telephoto lens and a 0.6 times wide angle lens. One thing that I really don't like about this camera is the processing. The images are over sharpened in my opinion, and it applies a lot of beauty filters. And I say beauty in quotation marks. It just makes your skin look really weird and it's not a good look. I wish it would just look normal and not like it's trying to fix your face. But other than that, the low light mode also works really well and it's, it's overall a pretty good camera. Not the best, but definitely not the worst either. Now, finally, software. This is probably my least favorite part of the phone and I have to say I really like the customizability features of Android over iOS, but there's a lot of things that Huawei adds to Android that I'm not a fan of. There's a lot of bloatware that comes on the phone that just can't be removed or disabled and you just kind of have to deal with it. And there's a few little bugs that they don't break the phone, but they just make it just a little bit annoying to use. And it's fine, I can work around it, I can live with it, but it's just kind of something I wish that wasn't there. And the last thing about the software, which you can either take as a good thing or a bad thing, EMUI copies a lot of features from iOS, such as the sharing screen, the, the way the home screen is set up when you start up your phone. You really start to notice it as you use the phone. There's so many little things that Huawei copied over. <laughs> so if you're coming from an iPhone, maybe that's a good thing because it'll help ease the transition. But if you're a normal Android user, you might be a little bit annoyed by it. So take that how you will. It's not really a negative or a positive. It just depends on your situation. And yeah, that's about it. So would I recommend this phone? Um, Yeah, I would. I've enjoyed using it and it's gonna be my daily driver phone for the next couple of years at least. So it's, uh, I would recommend this phone. It has great battery life, a decent camera, and it has a nice screen, but you have to deal with EMUI and all of the caveats that come with that. You have to deal with the no headphone jack and crappy speakers. And like just about every other phone this year, you have to deal with a notch. So if any of those are deal breakers for you, then maybe this phone isn't right for you. But I think that it's a good sell and I'm going to be using it. If you want to buy this phone, I'm going to leave an Amazon link in the description below. It's an affiliate link, which means if you buy the phone from that link, then I get a kickback. It's no extra cost to you, but it helps me out a bit. You can also find my social media links in the description of this video. You can follow me on Instagram or Facebook, or you can check out my website. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and I guess I'll see you in the next one.